Hi guys, um, a friend on Facebook asked me how you create a round robin in contact and he sent me an instrument over and I um, made this pseudo round robin thing for him and sent it back but he's still a bit unsure so I thought I'd do a quick video just to show you how you can do a basic round robin in contact. So this is in contact 4 but it'll work exactly the same in contact 5. So I've just created a simple instrument here. Um, these are samples from the Bell Lyre instrument I made uh, last year. Now first of all I'm just going to show you how you do a general round robin that would work with um, when you've got multiple round robin samples and then I'll show you how you can create a kind of pseudo round robin effect if you've only got one sample set and this is without any scripting. So if you've got something like this, we've got a single group here and this has got all the samples in um, basically what you do is you'd create a new group so I've just duplicated the first group and let's say we've got three sets of round robin samples so for this I'm actually only using one sample set because I only have one set of samples but imagine you had three different sets of samples one for each round robin so you'd create three groups and let's call them round robin 1, RR2 and RR3 so you put your first sample set in the first group, second sample set in the second group, third sample set in the third group and then you go to this setting here which says group, group start options make sure edit all groups is not checked so um, sorry not active so deactivate that and then also make sure you've only got a check in one of the boxes you don't want to check in um, more than one because we're only working on one group at a time then go to group start options and where it says always just change that to either cycle round robin or cycle random um, the cycle random is a, a basically a random round robin effect so we'll just go with cycle round robin and then do the same for this one for the second one and same for the third one and then go back to the first group and you can see here where it says position in round robin chain and this is basically the order that the round robins are going to be triggered so this one's set to 1, we want to set the second one to 2 and the third one to 3 and now if I play, um, I'll just play a single note but if I play it over and over you'll see um, the groups will be highlighted in, um, in order and it cycles round to the beginning again So that's the cycle round robin, and uh, if we put them on random, there's no um, position to select because it is just random. So the order that the groups are triggered now is just um, randomly selected. It may trigger the same group twice in a row because it is completely random. Now another thing you can do if you only have one sample set and you want to um, emulate a second round robin group and you don't want to use any scripting you can do a little trick. I'm just going to delete this third group because we don't need it. I'm just going to demonstrate with two groups. So we'll set it back to cycle round robin and now in this second group what we need to do to create this pseudo round robin effect is we need to somehow pitch shift um, the samples in the second group but also move them along one one tone as well uh, so if we go into the mapping editor here just click on the mapping editor to open that up make sure selected groups only is selected so that you're only seeing the samples in group 2 highlight all the samples and just move them down one semitone and then what you'll need to do is um, stretch the end one, the last set of, sem uh, of samples, stretch them up and you could probably delete this first set here because you want the range to be the same and the first group only goes up to A2 so you need to delete those to make them match. So now we've got the same range but they're all shifted down one so, so I'm just going to solo the group and play a note on um, the second round robin group and now we'll play it on the first round robin group, the same note, and you'll hear that the, um, the sound is pitch shifted. Okay, so now we need to make the second group match the first group. 
So we highlight all the uh, samples and then in this box here where it says tune, if we put minus one in there to take account of the semitone that we've shifted these down. So now both groups should have the same pitch for the same key but they'll actually be triggering different samples. And if we disable the group solo now you'll be able to hear the round robin effect. Um, one other thing, it's important that you've got tracking selected for this on the groups that you're moving the keys around. Um, so that's got to be enabled, otherwise it won't work. So I'll just quickly show you doing it with the third group. So we duplicate the first group again, just rename that and give it position 3. And then we shift them all up one key. Again making sure tracking is enabled. And then we can delete the top one because we want to keep the range of the instrument the same and we'll extend the bottom one. So it's kind of the opposite as we did with the second group. And then highlight all the groups and rather than putting negative one in there we just put plus one. And now we've got a three times simulated round robin. So now we've got a three times round robin using a single sample set and it sounds pretty good. Nobody's going to know that that's just one sample set and didn't use any scripting and we've done it as a cycle round robin but you can um, use the random option if you want. So I hope you found this useful and that you can apply it to your instruments and thanks for watching.